mode changes. A variable type of, well, not exactly evolution in the Digimon world, where a Digimon goes from one form to another, sometimes gaining a level, sometimes gaining new abilities, and sometimes just physically changing. But nowadays there are a ton of mode changes, so on today's video I'm going to be listing my top 10 personal favourites. But hey, the digital world can be scary. If you go into the digital world without a Digivice and your own Digimon partner, you're leaving yourself open to attacks from any evil Digimon, which is basically just like going onto the internet without a VPN, kinda. And that's why today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. As Digimon fans, we are intimately familiar with the internet. A VPN or virtual private network creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. In other words, it puts a protective shield or a mode change around your Digimon. And in this instance, your Digimon is your data. So that no one can take a sneak peek at your private correspondence. To stop doing silly metaphors, as a content creator, a VPN, specifically ExpressVPN, is invaluable to me. I get a ton of emails and there are often attachments to those emails. Having a VPN makes it way more secure clicking links because I'm not as scared that my IP address and things like that are gonna leak. Also, this summer I am planning to do more conventions and meet you lovely people, which will inevitably require me connecting to more public networks. And things like hotels and coffee shops. And I'm sure you connect to those kind of Wi-Fi networks all the time too. It would be incredibly easy for a hacker connected to the same unencrypted Wi-Fi network to steal your personal information. But ExpressVPN encrypts your network data with best-in-class encryption. It could take a hacker from the crack team maybe with a supercomputer billions of years to crack. And as a UK Digimon fan, I would love to be able to stream more of the dubbed seasons of Digimon, but they're not available in my country. But ExpressVPN lets me pretend that I'm in America and access all the Digimon I want, baby. So if that sounds good for you and you want to get ExpressVPN, Every one of you that does get it really supports the channel. You just need to click the link below and when you do use my link, you will get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and let's get securely to those mode changes. What is up digital companions? My name is Khan EX and welcome back to another video. And if it's not welcome back, why don't you become one of the top 10 favorite people in my life by hitting that subscribe button. <laughs> So yes, mode changes. We're gonna discuss each one in this video because some are a little bit weird. But let's begin with a set of Digimon. I know it's a top 10, but sometimes I group Digimon together because I'm wacky like that. The Blast Mode Digimon from the Digimon Axel. Now these are not burst modes, these are blast modes and they're also different from Beelzemon Blast Mode. I did a whole video about them, the uh, card is on screen right now. But to give you a TLDR, on the Digimon Axel, when you revved up for battle, sometimes your Digimon Digimon could access a blast mode, which has come full circle in a lot of ways with the creation of Cthulhumon, a dark evil marine Angemon, not to be confused with marine Devimon. There's also the metal Etamon blast mode, which makes him all spiky as if he's charged with electricity or he's turned into ferrous metal. And unfortunately, none of these blast mode Digimon from the Axel have never been given official art. Now, I will say we do have an upcoming Digimon card game set called Blast Ace, which is supposed to focus on Digimon Adventure and Digimon Seekers. Weird combo. And and Digimon Seekers apparently does have some relation to the Digimon Axel. It's got the D Brigade and stuff like that in it, so I guess that makes sense. So it's not impossible that a couple of these blast modes are gonna get cards and official art and reference book listings this year, but I'm not holding my breath, though I have a little bit of hope still inside somewhere. Okay, number nine is Metal Greymon Alterus Mode. I just think it's so cool the way the Dark Miasma resulted in a mode change for Metal Greymon. One of the things, and there's not a lot of them, that I really liked about Adventure 2020 was exploring different evolution paths for these very established Digimon from Digimon Adventure, giving them new mode changes, alternate evolution routes, etc. And with Alterus mode being based off of the designs of the X antibody Metal Greymons, that's just so much fun. That railgun is incredibly cool and was just one of the highlight moments of 2020 for me. I wish that I could say that I loved Wagarurumon Sagittarius mode as much as I love Metal Greymon Alterus mode. Maybe I need to dip into my own dark miasma and do a top 10 worst mode changes in, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Alright, moving on to number 8, we have Belfamon Sleep Mode. It's just so cool to me that this gigantic raging demon Belfamon transforms into this cute little guy. The fact that it goes to sleep because its power is too immense is just incredible. And I love that little Tamagotchi alarm clock it's got around its neck. I love mode changes of all kinds, but I think it's particularly fun when a mode change fundamentally changes the status quo of a Digimon. Talk about this in a little bit.
bet with another pick on this list. But Balfamon Rage Mode and Sleep Mode is so cool to me. It makes me wish that more Digimon had a little diminutive sleep mode, kind of like the NX Digimon from Cyber Sleuth. I would just love to see more little sleepy guys. Like imagine Millennium Mon sleep mode. <laughs> I know the whole sleep and rage thing is integral to Balfamon himself, but you know, it's fun. We make stuff up out here. I also think it's fun. You might perceive that the sleep mode doesn't do any damage because it's asleep, but according to the reference book, it's able to inflict damage to Digimon just with its snores. Can relate. And then from sleep, we uh, fall down. Yes, it's Lusamon fall down mode. Now this is an interesting mode change. It's given the mode Monica alongside Satan mode, but yet it advances a level from the regular Lusamon. Very interesting to me. Lusamon fall down mode is a fantastic design. One of my favorite designs in Digimon, the half angel, half demon looks so good, but it's also kind of a Digimon knowledge head scratcher. What makes this a mode and not an evolution? On the list so far and continuing into the list, we will see mode changes of the same level. That's why it's a mode change. It's the same Digimon just changing its configuration. But Lusamon, the little cherubim, literally falls down like Lucifer, the biblical angel and devil. I'm not up on my theology. So the fact this is designated a mode is super fascinating to me. Digimon Web has started to do Digimon profiles and I'd really love more of a deep dive into what the creators think the designation of a mode changes versus an evolution versus a slide evolution, etc. Uh, then we go from logic to me being an eight year old boy watching Digimon and number seven on our list is Imperial Digimon Fighter Mode and Imperial Digimon Fighter Mode Black. It just used to be a recolored variant of Imperial Digimon Fighter Mode, but now it's got some ridiculously cool in the Digimon card game and on the reference book. Both of these are incredible. I was never a dragon mode kid. I love Pyle Dramon. People keep saying that I say Imperial Dramon weird. I'm sure I remember the dub or the sub being like Imperial Dramon, but I guess it's Imperial Dramon, but I, it doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. So I'm gonna keep calling it Imperial Dramon, sorry. Imperial Dramon fighter mode is just the zenith of Pyel Dramon to me. I love it so much. And you know, while I think the scene involving Paladin mode is sick, I've always found Paladin mode's actual design could have had a couple of more things going for it. That's why I really like Imperial Dramon fighter mode black too. Those slightly demonic elements that they've added in recent years are just super cool. And then going from just really cool Digimon with a black variant, we go to a Apollomon Whispered. We had a whole discussion about this on my Twitter about whether Apollomon Whispered is even a mode change or if it's a slide evolution like Shurubimon Vice and Virtue or something different, but I am choosing to include it on this list. Apollomon is a mega reaching almost its upper limit on evolution and I don't think Apollomon Whispered is supposed to be an ultra. It's one of those Digimon from Cross Wars that currently has not been assigned a level in the reference book, but I doubt it's supposed to be on like Omnimon or Omnimon Merciful mode level. In addition to this, the perfect allegory to me is Gallantmon Crimson Mode. Both Crimson Mode and Whispered come from Mega Level Digimon, also of notable Digimon groups, the Royal Knights and Olympus 12 respectively, and both Mega Level Digimon assimilate specifically a digital life form to transform. Gallantmon fuses with Grani to become Crimson Mode, and Apollomon fuses with Whisper to become Apollomon Whispered. And I think that is a clear distinction that to me makes Apollomon Whispered a mode change. It is basically one for one with Crimson Mode, it's just a dark version of of that. But then again, there's a bunch of mode changes that don't involve that. There is Old Force Feedrum on Future Mode. Digimentals aren't always the armor digi eggs you know from Zero Two, but that's still an outside force making a mode change. But anyway, I'm counting Apollomon Whispered as a mode change. If you don't like it, soz. Does it matter? We're all gonna die one day. Anyway, that all being said, Cross Wars taking Apollomon, the champion of the sun. sun and corrupting him into this evil dominating presence was incredibly cool. I am a sucker for a dark counterpart, be it Gulu, Scamamon, Devimon, or even Black War Greymon, and Apollomon Whispered, in my opinion, is more than deserving of standing alongside them with one of the most badass designs in Digimon history. It's almost like a combination of a dark Digivolution and a mode change, in my opinion, and that is peak. Peak fiction. All right, and then from evil, we go to the light with Holy Angemon Priest Mode. Wouldn't be a Khan video without some V Tamer love, and unfortunately, All Force V Dramon Future Mode didn't quite make the cut. I do like Future Mode, but it's just not a standout to me. I don't like it a ton more than regular All Force V Dramon, but holy moly, Holy Angemon Priest Mode is radical. A more stripped back priest version of Holy or Magna Angemon. It really stood out to me reading V Tamer after I was already familiar with Adventure to see this very different take on what I knew as Magna 
and Digimon. In addition to that, it's also kind of getting its flowers recently. In Digimon Adventure 2020, during Magna Angemon's Digivolution into Seraphimon, it briefly took on the form of Holy Angemon Priest Mode, which was incredibly great. Again, one of those standouts from 2020 is these little lore nods, these little additions and calling back to things that we know. It, it's super good. Just a very reserved Digimon. I think it stands out for its simplicity and yeah, I'm always gonna love it. And that more religious priestly mode change dovetails us nicely into my next pick. Sequoia Mon Miko Mode is just so simple and I love it. Renamon's evolution line is so intrinsically linked to Shinto and Taoism, so to have Sequoia Mon, the powerful mega, mode change to a shrine maiden, I think is such a fun and unique way to go about things. Especially as it is said that Sequoia Mon seldom fights while in Miko mode. That makes it feel even more unique from a lot of Digimon that will mode change to increase their combat power. Again, earlier when I was talking about sleep mode, it's nice to see a mode change that isn't all about combat prowess and instead is about fundamentally changing a part of that Digimon, whether it's sleeping to kind of incubate its power or becoming Miko mode to be a more dedicated shrine maiden. It's nice to see those Digimon forms that aren't all about just getting stronger all the time. Uh, but saying that, uh, while we're in the Digimon Tamers field, uh, Gallopmon Crimson Mode, number two, baby. <laughs> Sometimes it is all about getting stronger and cooler, okay? Gallopmon Crimson Mode is one of the most iconic moments in Digimon media. Digimon Tamers actually collects a bunch of Ws. I already really like the idea of Grani. It reminds me of the Soul Bird from Power Rangers Wild Force. Can you tell that I'm like a Saban Fox Kids kid? Does that come through really evidently? But then to find out that Gallopmon could go further beyond, just like the Omnimon that I loved watching Digimon the movie, by fusing with Grani was just a standout moment. Plus giving Gallimon, who had been through the whole Megidramon drama, angel wings felt very appropriate. This digital hazard becoming almost an angel of the digital world is just very cool. I also think you can see a lot of Gallimon Crimson Mode's DNA in things like the burst modes from Digimon Data Squad, so it really feels like an iconic Digimon. And while yes, Zero Two is my favorite season, we are in fact ending on just one more tame as Digimon because number one had to be Beelzemon Blast Mode. I think this guy tops almost everyone's list of favorite Blast Modes and Beelzemon tops a lot of people's lists of just favorite Digimon straight up. Impmon and Beelzemon's story in Digimon Tamers is one that I think a lot of people gravitate to and feel very strongly about. Beelzemon's story, let's not forget, intrinsically ties into other big moments of Tamers like Leomon's death, Megidramon, the addition of new Tamers to the Tamers cast, his bike and Melkoramon, the ties to Hypnos and the D-Reaper, it's all there with Beelzemon, it's so cool. So to see this guy who had been such a mischievous asshole and eventually just a real demon, fitting of the name Demon Lord, mode changing to this form more reminiscent of a fallen angel. In fact, in the reference book, it says that when it raised its power and spirit to its utmost limits, instead of evolving in wickedness, it maintained a calmer mental state, and its three once baleful red eyes have become green. All that because I and Marco gave Impmon a toy gun and a kiss on the cheek is just such a phenomenal Digimon moment, a moment that you don't get in other shows. That is Digimon to me. Blast mode, despite the fact of being called blast mode, is almost like angel mode in many ways. Beelzemon coming to fight the D-Reaper, help Jerry, and even align himself with Kalumon is just one of the greatest moments in Digimon. And that is why, to me, Beelzemon Blast Mode is my number one Digimon mode change. But as always, this is just my opinion. No top 10 is definitive. So let me know in the comments below your top 10 mode changes, or if a lot of them are the same as mine, tell me why you like them. Huge shout out to my sovereigns, It's Elementary, ZDK14, and Jmon, and now you're all down here. Yeah, we're trying new things. So shout out to the Digi Destin, the Sovereign, the Tamers, the Khan Club. You are all phenomenal. Thank you so much. Your names are all below me right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time when we go digital. Bye-bye.